Greetings friends, Gravehammer here. In this tutorial uh, we will take a closer look on how to paint the Chaos Lord on Karkadrak, but all techniques shown here are applicable to any armored miniature. We start off by pre-shading the miniature with Miskatonic Grey from scale 75, alternatively you can use Administratum Grey. This will be an underlying first shade, which also offers a tonal standpoint for further progress. Shade the miniature from top to bottom, focusing more on the armor blading upper parts and the Chaos Lord himself. Pick up any points of interest, like the bone spikes, horn, cloth and the skulls hanging on his right side. We want to give these parts a bit thicker coat and also create slight panel gradient on the armor. Mix in some white ink with Miskatonic Grey and continue the pre-shading and panel gradient. Focus most on the armor blading this time around, along with the Chaos Lord. We are using few layers of washes to bring heavy shadows and tonal changes, so having a proper layers is important at this point. And this is how your miniature should look after using the grey and white. Using Vallejo burnt iron, paint the metallic parts of the miniature, such as the chain mails on the mount, um, the spurs and heels of the boot and the axe and the sword. This is commonly very dark metallic and we want to keep it so for later parts. Using a mix of Liberator Gold with a tiny drop of Avalanche Sunset, paint the golden parts of the miniature. We want to paint the Chaos Star, the armor edges and the decorations of the Chaos Lord and the sword handle. This will dull down the shiny effect of the paint, but gives it more contrast and warmth for the following phases. The unlucky Stormcast gets a quick brush with pure Red Reputer armor from Citadel. Paint the straps with generic brown leather color. I'm using Rhinox hide here, but any darker brown will do. Do this only on the straps and the axe handle, we work the other leathery parts later on. At this point, if you want, you can use a matte varnish to protect the underlying layers as we go for the enamel and oil washes. For our first tone wash, we use Streaking Grime for dark vehicles. This will give the whole model a grayish look with a hint of green. Go over the mo whole model and let the grime cure until it's no longer visibly wet. Using an old beat up hobby brush, clean up the model with white spirits or odorless thinner for oil paints. Clean up the crime following your initial pre-shade, removing more from the upper parts of the armor plating and from the belly side of the mount. Brush some thin down iron rack skin from Citadel on the carcat rack skin. We want it slightly different color and a bit brighter for later purposes. Focus the brushing on the snout and more visible parts of the scales. Using Rockart Flesh, brush the bony parts of the miniature. Give the horn, spikes, a tail and claws a quick pass. You can do this by dry brushing easily enough, so no airbrush needed in this phase, but I felt a bit lazy. Uh, I also wanted to add some on the big horns coming from the Lord's helmet. Um, using a pad on black, I stippled the cargo drag and the Chaos Lord with black scratches. This is not a precise uh, chipping, but rather a random way to add interest to the armor plating. Thank you. 
using a deepkin flesh, uh, stipple the armor platings with a small dry brush. You don't really need Ardis Opus for this, uh, a well conditioned Citadel dry brush will work perfectly. Stipple over the scratches but don't cover them uh, completely and focus slightly more again on the upper parts of the armor. And now uh, we paint the boots with Rhinox hide at this point and give some quick brush over the fur on the cloak. We add some detail to the metallic parts using lead belcher, paint the spurs, uh, buckles and any leftover metallic parts on the miniature. Leave the axe and the sword as is. Wash over the whole model with Abteilung 502 black oil diluted to a wash consistency. Dab the oil with medium brush, almost like doing big bin washes. This particular model has a lot of crevices and recesses, so a more runny wash will work perfectly. Sprinkle some black oil wash with a stiff brush over the lower parts of the miniature. This will allow more of a modeling effect and creates interesting pooling. Again, keep a q-tip around if you need to correct any unwanted mishaps. Give the lord and the cloak a bit of sprinkling too. Repeat the same sprinkle process with Abteilung 502 Dark Rust. This will melt down with the black oil wash and creates a really nice tonal variance. Paint some verdigris on the metallic parts. I'm using Abteilung 502 turquoise lights with small brush. I commonly add a few spots of the oil paint and then push it around with slight amount of white spirits on the brush. Alternatively, uh, if you don't want to use um, oil paints for this process, you can use Nihilac Oxide from Citadel for similar effects, but I do like oil paint for verdigris the best. Now that the armor plating is done for, we do a Drakai Violet shade on the Karka track. Use a drop of acrylic medium to thin down the wash and go over the recesses of the Karka track snout, the sides and the belly of the beast and on the paws also. You don't have to wash the whole model, just pick some points of interest like the face and the legs covered with plating. Again, if you feel you overdid anything, a Q-tip is a friend. Repeat the process with Karabakh Crimson diluted with medium. Ideally the previous wash is still wet and blends with the Karabakh slightly to create a nice scaly skin color. Small tonal chains in this manner will make a huge difference in the miniature contrast. And now we go for the glazing part. Mix Rockart flesh with acrylic medium uh, somewhere around 1 to 2 parts and start glazing the claws, teeth, horn and all the other pony parts of the miniature. I find this part always very satisfying as we bring more sharpness with very simple and quick glaze. The glaze is quite transparent so you might need to add few thin layers along the line. Work the miniature until you feel satisfied. Now we come with a glaze of some iron rack skin on the scales and the snout of the carga drag. You can also give the cloth a slight glaze too. Stipple a few dots on the skulls also to bring a little bit more interesting variation. Ah yes, now we get to the interesting part. Starting with the hellish glow effects. Paint thin down ivory from Vallejo in the axe markings. 
Try to be neat about it, but slight overlap is okay. Go over the sword, the Chaos Lord armor parts and the face mask. And also the deep cuts of the Karkatrak armor plating with the same technique. Using Vallejo red ink, do a very subtle pass over the previous Chaos runes and marks as well as the weapons. Work carefully as we don't want too much of the glow. Less is more in this case. If you are doing a Chaos Lava base for the miniature as I am, you might want to do a reverse senator with the red ink. Focus on the belly and the lower parts of the armor, but be very subtle again about it. Less is more, yet again. Add some heavier brushing of the red ink on the cape, as we want it to stand out slightly more. Next up, we go over the markings and runes with Vallejo Fluorescent Red. You can always uh, build this up by doing couple layers on top of each other, but try and keep the paint mostly in the recesses. We want to have the Chaos Lord to have a slightly more uh, dramatic effect, so we glaze over the cloak with fluorescent red also. And with this our miniature is nearing completion. To finalize the awesome glow effect, add a very tiny drop of Vallejo Ivory to create hot spots. You can further increase the gradient in the recesses by doing another more tidier pass with fluorescent orange and repeat the hot spots, but that is up to you to decide. Complemented with my lava based tutorial that is free to watch on YouTube, the Chaos Lord on Karkatrak is ready to rip and tear. Simple techniques, simple washes and the contrast point of red complemented with greenish tone really makes a great looking model. Hope you enjoyed the tutorial, now get your troops painted and ready for some tabletop wargaming. If you want to see what I'm working on, consider checking my Instagram at grave.hammer and Facebook Gravehammer Miniatures. Huge shout out to Sat Gaskakun for being an absolute champ and San Hughes for his insane support. See you on the next tutorial, stay awesome and remember kids, stay grim dark.